It's not, oh, I hope I can get my workout in. It's become a part of my day. The rest of my day is scheduled around the workout. And I have that luxury and I know I'm very fortunate because of that. And not everyone is awarded that, but once you get disciplined and make this a part of your day, you will find a way to get something in. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I'm training now, right? I'm not trying to be the fittest person on earth anymore. Um, you know, I'm done with my military career. Uh, I still get after it. I still love to work out really hard. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I'm trying to be fit, healthy, look fit, stay fit, and be able to like still beat my kids at anything I need to beat them at. And that's really all my goals are right now. Besides, I wanna, I wanna squat 500 pounds. I wanna deadlift 500 pounds, which is good to have goals in the gym. But if your goal is, hey, I'm a parent, uh, you know, I'm not an athlete really more anymore, or I'm playing, you know, slow pitch softball or whatever you're doing, you know, at this age, and you just wanna stay healthy for life, uh, look fit, be fit, be healthy, and beat your kids at sports still, right? Like you can get in and out of the gym in an hour and still have a great workout. And a lot of my accessory now is becoming a little bit more of like bodybuilding style workouts. Um, so I'll typically start off with a little bit of conditioning. So some sort of um, Metcon or Imam or whatever. Uh, and I'm definitely not doing certain movements anymore. Uh, I don't do handstand push-ups very often. I don't do pistols ever. Um, you know, I don't do a ton of Olympic weightlifting, maybe here and there, maybe once, once a week. Uh, sometimes it's with dumbbells, sometimes it's with a barbell, but not a ton of that. Definitely not going heavy with it uh, very often. Doing a lot of like uh, dips, pull-ups, chin-ups, um, you know, definitely still squatting obviously a lot, but yeah, like I've definitely changed how I train because I have different goals now. Yeah, so today we're gonna start off with a 18 minute EMOM. So what if you don't know what EMOM is, it's every minute on the minute. It's a great way to still get your heart rate up and uh, get a good workout in with a little bit of built-in rest. So we'll do 18 minutes. So every minute we'll rotate. So the first minute we'll do bike, second minute we'll do dumbbell snatch, third minute we'll do rope climb, and then we'll continue, we'll keep going through that for 18 minutes. So basically six rounds of this workout. So we're gonna go, for me, I wanna do about 40-ish, 45 seconds of work, maybe 15 seconds of rest between those movements. Um, so the bike, we're gonna go 16 calories. Again, so if you're looking at doing this for yourself, whatever you can get in about 40 seconds. Um, so if you wanna have a goal, that's great. If you wanna just do time domain too, that's fine too. Uh, so for the dumbbell snatch, we're gonna go an 85 pound dumbbell and we're gonna go 10 reps. That's gonna be tight, actually. That'll be fat. that'll be that'll be close to a minute. Um, and then for the rope climbs, we'll do three seated legless rope climbs. This will get nasty. This will get your heart rate up. This will get the job done. So 18 minutes, quick, easy, and then we'll move into some of our accessory pieces today. I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm looking at more of like chest, upper body stuff. So we're gonna do some dumbbell bench, some incline bench some chin-ups and some dips. Um, I'll probably do both the chin-ups and the dips weighted. And again, that won't be for time. That'll be more like four by tens, um, things like that, right? And three by 10, four by 10, something like that. And then I will finish with a little bit of sprinting on some machine, whether it's the rower, the bike, ski erg, or the running machine, um, cause it's a little cold outside today, you know? And I'm not feeling it, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. so if you guys are interested in this type of programming, this type of working out, let me know. We are definitely looking at launching a program like this. Um, and it is, it's, exact, it's, it's how I'm training every day. I do take rest days now. I train probably six days a week. Definitely take at least one rest day. I think if we did it in the program, it would probably be like a five day program with two rest days. So yeah, let us know. If you're interested in it, uh, hit me up. And yeah, here we go. Nice little five foot rope. Now I have my rope. I was literally being a little baby, crying, figuring, oh, I don't have a rope. 
And all I had to do was look on Rogue's website and say, oh, you have a five foot rope and I have a very small rig and I can sit on the floor and do legless rope climbs. It's exactly the same thing. There we go. All right. Remember on the minute, so you're gonna have a little bit of built-in rest. Um, so again, you can find easy substitutions for anything. The bike, obviously, whatever you have, rower, skier, if you don't have any of these, I don't know. <laughs> oh, she got pulled, yeah, Sydney got pulled down. All right. Dave, you're on the, you're on the speaker. Anyways, um, so if you don't have the bike, right? That doesn't matter that you can use a row or ski or a running machine, right? You just wanna do about 40 seconds of work. So you wanna do about 40 seconds of work. Um, if you don't have any of those, uh, you could jump rope, double unders, you could do burpees, right? So there's, trust me, you can get it in. That part of the workout is just getting your heart rate up. That's all it is. And so um, lots of ways to do that. Dumbbell snatches. Again, I'm doing 85, 10 and 85. This is a very scalable movement. If you don't have dumbbells, kettlebells work. Um, if you have a, if you don't have dumbbells and you only have a barbell and plates, do a barbell, do a light snatch, 10 reps, you know? So, uh, and if you don't feel comfortable doing snatches, do clean and jerk. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, do a sandbag, whatever, right? Again, it's just figuring out what you have and what you're capable of. Everything is scalable. Um, and the last thing is rope climbs. I have a short rope, um, which is awesome. If you don't have a rope, towel pull-ups are always a substitution. Pull-ups are a substitution. Basically, you're hitting your upper back pulling, right? So whatever you can do to do that, that, that will work, right? So pull-ups, chin-ups, um, you know, lots of, lots of substitutions for that. So there is a way to figure out any to do anything that we do in our programming. So, yep, here we go. numbers I maybe could have went looking back on it now I could have probably went maybe 12s on the dumbbell snatch but uh everything else was perfect got my heart rate up uh pushed me you know I was pushing pretty heavy on the bike you know still only getting off at like 15 45 seconds uh, the rope climb started to get pretty uh, nasty, I, but they were good. So, yeah, it was a good, it was a good, perfect workout. You know, um, pushed me a little bit. 
Like if I was, for my military program, I'd probably bump that up to about 27 minutes or 24 minutes. Um, and maybe go 17, 12, three on that, something like that, you know? So you can play with it, right? These are, these workouts are designed um, to hit a certain stimulus. And uh, for this type of working out, right? That's a great workout. Quick, quick heart rate up on the bike. Um, dumbbell snatches kind of went a little heavier. Probably should have bumped the numbers up because I was coming off at 30 seconds. And then the rope climbs were great. They definitely started to tax the grip, hit my lats, hit my biceps. Um, so yeah, good, good uh, conditioning piece. 18 minutes, you're done. On to the accessory pieces. We'll start with some dumbbell bench. Here we go. Cool, so we'll hop into accessory, which is, again, like I've been saying, it's a little more bodybuilding style of working out, getting a little bit more focused on building a little bit of size, right? So I typically try to stay in for my, these accessory pieces, um, stay into a eight to 12 rep range. Uh, so I pick a weight that for four sets, I'll try to start off hitting 12s. Um, if I come down to 11, 10, nine, eight, I'm fine. If I have to go below eight, then I, I'm gone, I've gone too heavy. If I can do more, then I've gone too light, right? That's how I perceive the weight that I'm using, especially for dumbbells, right? I can't prescribe a dumbbell. You just have to know your, your rep ranges, right? And that's how you do that by, by testing it. Another fun thing I'll do with these style of workouts is I'll add um, like 60 or a uh, 20 cal row in between my sets, something that takes about a minute so it defines my rest for me. So instead of sitting there and just being like, oh, all right, I got to rest. And sometimes I'll lose track of time. And uh, this kind of defines my rest and it keeps my heart rate up a little bit. So just another fun thing to do to add to give yourself a little bit more conditioning if you want. If you don't, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, right? It's something that I do sometimes, not every time. So yeah, we'll start off with dumbbell bench. We'll go into incline bench. Same thing, I'll probably try to stay into the uh, 12 to 15 rep range on the incline bench. And then I'll do some chin-ups and some dips. Uh, for chin-ups and dips, I typically go three by 10 to 12 as well. So um, right now that's kind of where the rep ranges I'm at. Chin-ups and dips, I do more, probably two to three times a week. Bench, I'll do one to two times a week. Let's go. Here we go. My shoulder has been kind of bugging me a little bit. And I, if you follow me on Instagram, right, I showed you the Balboas that I've been doing. And so I, d I didn't do them in my warrant today. So I felt a little tweak there. So I'll hit a few Balboas in between these sets. Try to see if it can clear that out a little bit. Feels a little better, yeah. Definitely, uh, I think, you know, what it is, is I have something going on in the front. And I think that the shoulder gets shut down somewhere. And again, it's just activation. I think, you know, strengthening of stabilizer muscles that get neglected when we do the big movements more so. So those Balboas, I, since I started doing them, all of a sudden I was like, man, my shoulders are feeling better. And so uh, now I start to do them probably three to four times a week now. And staying light, high reps, almost 15 to 15 to 20 rep range. What I tell my, I have my boys do them too because sometimes your shoulders hurt from baseball. And I'm like, do them until they burn really bad and then do one more rep. <laughs> so that's what I do too. Big things I've ever done was 225 bench for 20 reps. And so I want to get back up to go over 20 now. Three goals. Three by 10 the other day at 225 for 220. Yeah, three by 10 at 225. I felt like I could have probably gotten like maybe 13 reps. So long way to go. Well, 225 max bench is like a NFL combine 
um, thing. Like there's like linemen who can't do it for 20 reps. Early on, I didn't really have someone showing me how to work out. And so it was, you know, I can't, I come from a wrestling background. I started wrestling in eighth grade. You know, we had a bench at the house when I was little. So we benched a lot, uh, didn't really do much else with it. Um, we did a lot of traditional bodybuilding and then back when no one really did legs, it was all, everything was upper body. It was very chest on Mondays, back and buys on Tuesdays, arms on Wednesdays type of working out. Um, so, you know, when I found CrossFit in 2005, it was like kind of very, it was like mind blowing. I was like, this is so cool. Uh, all these different movements started to get added into it. And, and then I started to have goals with weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, you know, slowly. Um, I used to skip the strength days, to be honest. I would be like, no, I'm just going to do all the conditioning stuff. This is really fun. I like this. And then slowly I switched to liking the, uh, the weights. And I always benched because bench was just what we grew up doing. And so, yeah. Now, now it's like, you know, for a while I hadn't, didn't have one. And finally I was like, you know what? Like, uh, I just turned 40. Let's have some sort of goal, right? So you're not just coming in here mindlessly lifting. Um, and I've always loved squatting. Squatting's always been like one of my favorites. So that's where the 500 pound squat came from. Right. Yeah, I hit 435 without a belt the other day. I was really happy about that. Hit 420 for a triple. So, yes, it's coming along. So on to incline. So I'm only gonna do three sets here, 12 reps, 12 to 15 reps. Trying to do speed, speed on the up portion of the lift. Um, so I'll probably only go 70s. Um, and hopefully I can stay fast there uh, for three sets with again with about 60 to 90 seconds of rest between. To keep me on track, this one I will do, I'll do some row. I'll do some 20 cal rows. Favorite line is blur the lines between strength and conditioning, which means, you know, lift with a high heart rate or lift moderate weight fast. So, you know, it's like sometimes, and for, and for a lot of reps, you know, you don't have to slow heavy for everything. Uh, Cause that's really boring. And I think, Intensity is what drives results. And so the more intense you can be. So let's say, I guess like a power endurance is what I like to call it, where we're moving our 80, 75 to 80% uh, percent for a lot of reps in a long duration. So like, let's say 30 power cleans at 225 or 15 power cleans at 225 was 15 muscle ups in between or five power cleans on the minute plus five burpees. So you do five power cleans, five burpees on the same minute. And you do that for durations. And uh, right, we're blurring our lines between our strength and conditioning. And it's really fun. It's a fun way to lift and you see great results from it. To, uh, some pull ups and dips. You know, I've changed it up a lot with my pull ups. I'll do either a lot of neutral grip, right? So palms facing our ears, or I do a lot of chin ups. Um, and what it helps do is pull my shoulder back, right? When we do a, a lot of bench, we tend to have our shoulders forward because this is getting all tight from the bench, right? So we want to get our, be able to get our shoulders back. And by doing some chin-ups, 
and it actually hits that back of the shoulder and back that pulls that shoulder back so you're not hunched forward um, and dips are just the upper body squat so you always do dips i go a little slower when you know because i can because i'm allotted that come out of time but to be honest like if i was moving like i am right now like you could literally get this workout done in probably like an hour hour and 10 minutes and that's including that warm-up too so I'm gonna do three by 10 weighted chin-ups, weighted dips, and basically have very little rest in between the three rounds. This isn't for time, again, but I don't wanna waste time here because this is, chin-ups aren't gonna affect my dip. So um, I might, I'm gonna do the chin-ups right into the dips, rest probably about a minute, three rounds. So this should take me again, probably around nine, 10 minutes. So another nine, 10 minutes, right? So 14 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, a couple minutes in between, you know, that's a, this portion should probably be about 30 minutes. And with that Metcon and warm up, that was probably about 30 minutes. Yeah. So like right over an hour, hour, 10 minutes is really all you need. The biggest time saver for me is having this stuff at home. I'm also, I'm also very disciplined when it comes to my workouts. It's something I know it's not, oh, I hope I can get my workout in. It's become a part of my day. The rest of my day is scheduled around the workout. And I have that luxury and I know I'm very fortunate because of that. And not everyone is awarded that, but once you get disciplined and make this a part of your day, you will find a way to get something in. And that's why you always hear people like Jocko saying, discipline is what gets it done. It's not motivation, right? Motivation will come and go very quickly, but when you get disciplined in the things that you want to have done for whatever reason, whether it be your goal of being fit, healthy, looking fit, uh, being around for a long time, just being healthy, right? Like if you have that goal, this has to be a part of it because this is going to get you to that goal, right? This is going to make you look fit, make you be fit, make you be able to, uh, live a longer, healthier life. 60 minutes can be a lot of time for a lot of people, but again, this is such a, even before when I didn't have the time, I found the time because I, I knew it had to be a part of my day. So I'm going to do weighted, right? You don't have to start obviously with weight. You don't even have to start with your body weight. You could use a band and give yourself assistance for pull-ups, but being able to pull your own body weight up is definitely something you should be able to do. And so um, working to it, right? Using assisted pull-ups, using jumping pull-ups, um, just doing negatives, right? So a negative is jumping up into the pull-up and lowering yourself down as slow as you can. A great place to start. Uh, I find chin-ups to be easier. I think most people do. So start with chin-ups and then switch your grip, go neutral, go uh, palms out. So yeah, and dips are another great tool. Um, you can do them on rings. You can do them on a dip machine. Uh, you can do dips on a bench behind you, right? So right, if you can't perform a dip on your own, you can start with a very modified version where knees out, boom. And I'm just hitting this right here. That's pretty simple. And the closer you bring your feet to you, the, the more weight you're taking off of your body. So, uh, and then you'll slowly work your way into doing regular dips or weighted dips. The hardest part is getting up to the bar. So you become smarter than the average bear. Yeah. Start giving yourself a little step. That's basically a day of how I train now. Um, and that was, even with stopping and talking, trying to explain a lot of stuff, I was done in probably an hour and 15 minutes. So I think without that, if I really was trying to get through this, I could get that done in an hour. Um, and so and that's including warm up, workout, accessory, bodybuilding at the end. So uh, in and out of a gym, 60 minutes, more than enough time to get a great workout in uh, five days a week. 
that's, you know, a great amount of time, right? That's going to get you in great shape, uh, healthy, strong, looking fit, um, being able to beat your kids at things still, right? One of the most important, always remember that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that, that program. We're gonna, we're looking at launching that at the new year. Um, and so if you're interested, please let us know, hit us up. Uh, so yeah, would love to hear your guys' comments, thoughts, um, stuff, more stuff that you'd like to see. Uh, we are really trying to dive into more things about how I train, why I train, nutrition, anything. So just let us know. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, don't forget to pay the man.